The Valley of the End is one of the most important places in the Naruto universe. While only shown a few times, it housed multiple series-changing events, each of which altered fates of the village each time. The Valley of the End was formed after a massive battle between Hashirama Senju, the first Hokage, and Madara Uchiha. Having lost faith in the village that he and Hashirama had built together, Madara left it and returned years later to destroy it. He brought with him the Nine Tails to show he meant business, and in the end, Hashirama was forced to pseudo-kill Madara. I say pseudo because Izanagi is a thing Madara can do. This brought about a time of peace that didn't last very long as the first shinobi world war broke out not too long afterwards. It further planted the seeds that would eventually lead up to the fourth shinobi world war, as well as the revival of the Ten Tails. And this all occurred because a tiny line of events cascaded into a rift that separated two of the most powerful leaders in the world. But I can't help but wonder this. What would have happened if that rift never formed? What if Madara never left the village? Welcome to the Amagi. Before we begin, we publish a new video every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. The Amagi's reach stretches beyond just this channel, so if you're a fan of us, please consider subscribing to our other channels and following us on all of our social media. Help us reach our goal of passing 100,000 followers on all of our accounts by the end of the year. The story is about the same as you remember it. During the Warring States period, the Senju clan and Uchiha clan fought an endless war which spanned back millennia, all the way to the founders of the clans, the Sage of Six Paths sons, Indra and Asura Otsutsuki. Indra bore his father's eyes, and Asura bore his father's heart. They clashed over ideals, as to whether it was best for the world to be united by love or by strength. In the end, the Sage of Six Paths chose Asura to be his successor over Indra, which opened a rift that split the Sage's clan in two. This started a never-ending war which lasted long enough for everyone on both sides to forget why they were fighting in the first place. You may think that if they forgot why they were fighting, they might try to achieve peace, but it doesn't always work that way. War is a well-oiled machine and it's oiled with blood. During this time, if you were a Senju or Uchiha and were capable of holding and using a weapon, you were a soldier. Be you an old man or a child? This constant warring created endless bloodshed which fueled the next conflict. The reason didn't matter. You hated the Senju or the Uchiha because someone you loved was killed by them. That was your reason for fighting. Not because some grand ideal, but because you were a father who held your child in your arms as he bled out from an Uchiha kunai, or you were a brother who lost the last surviving sibling you had to a Senju's ninjutsu. Children were taught to love their clan and hate their enemies, and this constant cycle of death and retaliation fanned the flames of hatred and kept the fire going for thousands of years. That was until a chance meeting between two young boys occurred. Their names were Hashirama and Madara. They were of opposing clans, but they managed to become friends. They vowed to keep their clan names a secret, lest it slip out and invoke their duty to kill the other. So they didn't ever tell each other their names, but deep down, they probably knew. They would meet up and play with each other, and they would talk about and share their dreams. Eventually though, it became obvious that Hashirama was spending a lot of time elsewhere, so his father sent his brother Tobirama to spy on him. There he found Hashirama spending time with Madara. He reported back to his father about this, and they decided to set a trap for Madara to kill him. Unbeknownst to them, Madara's brother Izuna had been doing the same thing, and a trap was being prepared for Hashirama as well. This resulted in a battle between the two families which resulted in a simple truce between the two clans at Madara and Hashirama's behest. However, duty called. This ended the friendship between Hashirama and Madara, or so Madara believed. He held resolve that he would one day kill Hashirama. This resolve was enough to awaken his Sharingan. Together the two families would often find themselves locking blades on the battlefield, Madara against Hashirama, Izuna against Tobirama. In one particular battle, Tobirama was able to mortally wound Izuna. Hashirama tried to use Izuna to bring peace to their two clans, but Madara refused. Eventually, Izuna would succumb to his wounds, but not before he was able to bequeath his Mangekyo Sharingan to the nearly blind Madara, who had used his Mangekyo Sharingan enough to bring blindness. Upon transplanting them, Madara achieved his eternal Mangekyo Sharingan, which would grant him access to all of the abilities he had used with his prior Mangekyo Sharingan, but without the drawbacks. Izuna later died. 
This death fueled the hatred in Madara's heart, which led to more conflicts. However, despite being stronger than Madara, Hashirama always refused to kill the former, which meant that they were locked in a stalemate which lasted for decades. During this time, however, the Uchiha were losing faith in their hatred, and were slowly beginning to come around to the side of the Senju, but Madara's stubbornness kept the war going. On multiple occasions, he would find himself at the end of a Senju blade, but he always cheated death due to his former friend's soft heart. When Madara was nearly ready to be killed, Hashirama instead offered to allow himself to die to bring peace and allow Madara to live. This act caused Madara's heart to open to their friendship once more, which led to Madara acquiescing to their peace treaty. To begin to fulfill their dreams of peace, the Senju and Uchiha came together to unite their clans into one, creating what would later be known as the village hidden in the leaves. Hashirama and Madara together rekindled their former relationship, and Madara personally named the village. They had hoped that this place would bring peace and would stop the need for children to die in battle, but alas, the age-old question reared its head. Was it better to maintain peace through love, or was it better to maintain peace through strength? Hashirama believed peace should come by communication and understanding from all villages. But Madara, wishing to never have this peace interfered with again, believed that all villages should fly a single flag, and this led to his attack on Mu and Onoki of Iwagakure, the village hidden in the stones. It was his hope that this show of force would cause the village hidden in the stones to submit to the village hidden in the leaves. Eventually, the spot of Hokage was up for election, and Hashirama Senju was elected by popular vote. This was seen by Madara as an indication that the Uchiha would not be respectfully treated. Normally, this is the beginning of the end, as after witnessing the stone tablet that Zetsu altered, Madara would abandon the village. But for the sake of our what if, let's give good old Madara a confidence boost in his village's success and possibilities for peace. So let's say that Zetsu decided not to rewrite the tablet. In doing so, we eliminate the reasons for Madara leaving, and can thus begin our what if. Madara, despite his fears for his clan, remains a staunch supporter of Hashirama, deciding to trust his childhood friend to do what was right. Peace began to reign throughout the world, but it did not mean that threats would not arise to meet it. Tensions with the other villages were getting high. Madara believed that it was best to just invade them and take over, all of which he had a plan that he believed would succeed, which involved capturing the various tailed beasts that roamed the world, and then putting a single Uchiha bearing the Mangekyo Sharingan in control, and then use them as a spear to bring the villages down. However, Hashirama rebuked this idea, stating it was best to find a way to balance the power between villages. Hashirama proposed capturing the tailed beasts and spreading them among the villages to foster good relations and mutual deterrence. Tobirama, being caught between the voice of creation and the voice of destruction, needed to balance out as the voice of reason. He would inform them that they wouldn't just kill the other villages, and they wouldn't just give them the tailed beasts. They would offer something to the other villages, but these villages would need to pay for them. They would need to offer something in return. Madara would sigh as this, in his sight, would be viewed akin to risking peace, but Hashirama would tell him that peace would be threatened if it was made through war. Peace was best forged through love and bonds, similar to how he and Madara had brought peace. If they attempted to forge peace by taking over, it would inspire negative feelings, which would cause them to be viewed less as allies and more like villains to be defeated. Madara would relent, but he would warn Hashirama that he was handing their enemies a new sword with which to take a swing with. Eventually, Madara's beliefs would come to pass and prove he had been correct. Various wars would break out across the world and it seemed for a moment that they were back in the Warring States period. It was during one of these battles that Madara and Hashirama would find themselves cut off by the enemy. It would be here that Hashirama would fall. In one final moment, in hopes of saving Madara, Hashirama would transfer the last of his chakra to Madara. He would then pass. As the rain pattered off the blood-stained mud of the battlefield, while surrounded by enemy shinobi, Madara would cry out for his friend, letting out a roar of sorrow. He would then turn around, his Sharingan matured into Rinnegan. Madara would unwittingly summon the ghetto statue in his rage, which he would use to eradicate all enemy shinobi nearby. Tobirama would later find them, the enemy routed from the battlefield. He would lament his brother for a time and then question Madara on the odd thing he had brought in. He would further ask him how he awakened those new eyes and ask him what they were. Together, Tobirama and Madara would destroy the enemy and end the war. Madara would then find himself elected the next Hokage with Tobirama standing by his side as his shadow Hokage. 
During this time, Madara and Tobirama would study the stone monolith that was inherited by the Uchiha clan, and they would find Madara could now read it with his Rinnegan. Madara would read it and inform Tobirama of the contents. They would learn of the history of the Uchiha, the Senju, and the Rinnegan. They would learn the origin of Chakra and the origin of the Ghetto statue. Tobirama would inform Madara to be careful moving forward, as it seems that they were in possession of an ability that could easily be used for evil. It's not too long after this that the first Shinobi World War breaks out. It's generally considered Madara's fault this war begins due to his attack on Mu and Onoki years earlier setting a precedent. As this war rages on, Madara would find himself alone as Tobirama falls in battle when faced by the Kinku force. Madara is left by himself. Madara fell into a bout of loneliness which he attempts to recover from by creating a family of his own, but finds it doesn't help much. It is then, about 20 years later, that the Second Shinobi World War breaks out. The First Shinobi World War had ended with a truce as all five of the great shinobi nations had been gravely wounded by all the fighting. This led to poverty in all five villages. Eventually, under the pretext of expanding fair rights, other shinobi nations began to expand their territory through military means. This included Konoha, as Madara was now leading in accordance to the might makes right beliefs that he held. This led to the Second Shinobi World War, which showed Madara that he was also wrong about this. If love wasn't enough and strength wasn't enough, then what was? What could possibly be enough to protect their peace that they had formed? The events of the war stay mostly the same. After this, Madara is getting up in years. His hair is white and his body is beginning to fail. However, from his study of the Rinnegan, he comes to learn of the full extent of its abilities. Fearing what may happen to his village with the death of its three founding members on the horizon, he makes a fateful decision. Having captured four shinobi from the Second Shinobi World War, Madara uses a technique that Tobirama had created, the Imperfect World Reincarnation Jutsu, sacrificing one of the four prisoners to bring Tobirama back from the dead. However, he's only a shadow of himself not truly alive, merely tethered to this world by this jutsu. He's surprised and asks what Madara is doing. Madara claims that he has a plan in which the hidden leaf can be safe, and by which the founding members can live forever. Tobirama tells him that this jutsu was locked away for a reason, but Madara tells him of the events that have transpired since their death. He tells him that love did not secure the world's peace, and that strength couldn't do it either. And so he needed a third view. He needed to see if reason could secure peace. He tells Tobirama of his plans to ensure peace in the world, and Tobirama agrees to it. Eventually, Madara would make the decision to use his Rinnegan's Outer Path, Samsara of Heavenly Life technique, to fully restore Tobirama to life. This would cost Madara his life, but in accordance with the plan, he could then use the bodies of two of the three remaining shinobi to reincarnate both Hashirama and Madara, with the latter being reincarnated back in his prime. He would then allow Madara to remove the Rinnegan from his former body and implant them into the fourth and final shinobi prisoner. Madara would then cast a genjutsu over the shinobi and force him to use the same heavenly life technique that he used on Tobirama. This would officially restore Madara and Hashirama to life. As Madara's false reincarnated Rinnegan fell away to dust, he retrieves the Rinnegan from the dead shinobi and returns them to the head of their rightful owner, himself. Having been fully revived, Hashirama and Madara decide to name Tobirama as the third Hokage, and let's just say that the Hidden Leaf Village is extremely confused. They begin to wonder what's happened. They begin to wonder if it's possible that these supposed gods of Shinobi had in reality actually become gods themselves. Given his Rinnegan, Madara sort of sides with this view, but to keep the people from fearing, Tobirama informs them that they had perfected the Imperfect World Reincarnation Jutsu. This serves as enough of a cover to keep the true abilities of the Rinnegan hidden. However, seeing as this will go on forever, Black Zetsu makes his move. He can't shake Madara, it seems. The Uchiha monument has thoroughly scared him of the infinite Tsukiyomi, and so Black Zetsu bides his time and begins to pull some strings from the shadows. Eventually, the third Shinobi World War breaks out. It's during this time that Minato Namakaze and his team, consisting of Rin, Kakashi, and Obito, are set to destroy the Kanabi Bridge. Due to Madara, Hashirama, and Tobirama being present, however, Minato never needs to leave his team behind, and thus they complete their mission with zero casualties. But during the time that Kanabi Bridge is destroyed, Madara Uchiha finds himself surrounded by Zetsu. He is at first confused, but things begin to make sense to him. Before he can react, Black Zetsu appears and takes his Rinnegan from him, leaving Madara blind. As Black Zetsu retreats, the white Zetsu surrounding him prepare to kill him. However, we are forgetting this is Madara, and he's just as much of a badass when blind as he is when he has his eyes. 
He manages to get his bearings and destroys most of the Zetsu, and those he fails to kill get killed when Hashirama arrives. The first thing he asks is if Madara is alright. The second thing he asks is where the Rinnegan have gone. Madara would state that they've been stolen. Hashirama tells Madara to leave the battlefield for the time being. He would return to the village hidden in the leaves where the current leader of the Uchiha clan would present Madara with a pair of Sharingan that had been taken from the corpse of a fallen Uchiha member who succumbed to his wounds in the hospital. Madara would accept these. He could see once more, and he had access to a pair of Mangekyo Sharingan, as large wars produced plenty of those. But he had lost access to his eternal Mangekyo Sharingan as well as his Rinnegan. He would need to get used to this Sharingan as well as its new abilities if he were to reclaim the Rinnegan from Black Zetsu. All the while, Black Zetsu approaches what was left of the Akatsuki, including Nagato and Konin, both of whom he had saved from Hanzo earlier. He would implant both Rinnegan into Nagato as he was the only one he had managed to convince to join him with enough chakra reserves to make use of the Rinnegan without many drawbacks, given that Nagato was an Uzumaki, a clan with notoriously massive chakra reserves. On top of that, to ensure he made the perfect weapon, Black Zetsu bonded the Spiral Face Zetsu to Nagato to ensure that he could stand up to the legendary founders of the Leaf, as it was obvious that he would eventually have to face him. Meanwhile, the Third Shinobi World War comes to a conclusion, as Madara, Hashirama, and Tobirama themselves are enough to turn the tide of the war. A time of peace is restored. All while the Hidden Leaf informed the Anbu to keep their eyes open for the Zetsu, or any leads that might help them retrieve Madara's missing Rinnegan. As time passes, Kushina, the bearer of the Nine Tails, becomes pregnant with her and Minato Namikaze's baby. Hashirama is the first to congratulate them and promises to keep the Hidden Leaf safe for the baby to grow up in. Eventually, the time would come for her to give birth and Hashirama orders the Anbu to protect her. However, a man bearing a spiral mask shows up and makes quick work of the Anbu. He sneaks in and holds the newborn baby Naruto hostage until he gets Kushina. Besides that, there are six others in the room, each one wearing a similar spiral mask. Minato has no choice. In exchange for Naruto's life, they take Kushina. They begin to pull the tailed beast from her. The Nine Tails appears and is immediately cast under the Rinnegan's Genjutsu. Tobirama is the first to notice this, though Hashirama and Madara sense it not long after. They would appear on the battlefield, and Madara would mention that the tailed beast bears the pattern of the Rinnegan in its eyes, symbolizing that it is under the Rinnegan's Genjutsu. Together, along with Minato, they fight against the being known only as Pain and his six paths. It becomes apparent that Madara's Rinnegan is in possession of this man. Together, the three Hokage and the Yellow Flash of the Leaf engage in battle against the Six Paths of Pain. With each of their abilities, they become harder to fight against, but it's nothing they can't handle, especially Madara, who actually has experience with these abilities and knows all of their strengths and weaknesses. He would manage to get through and shouts at Nagato, with an eye and smile that conveys the joy and battle high he was feeling that these were his abilities and that nobody could make as good use of them as Madara himself. That being said, he manages to sever the seal that keeps Nagato in contract with Kurama, and Nagato disappears. By this time, it's too late for Kushina, and she begins to fade. Kurama begins to rampage, but is suddenly stopped when Hashirama appears and uses his Hokage-style 60-year-old technique entering society with bliss-bringing hands. I won't lie, I love saying that technique's name. Kurama is docile by this time, and they begin to think about what to do about this. Minato, carrying the baby Naruto, offers the idea that the Ninetales' power be split between two beings. This would ensure that nobody could ever take the whole Ninetales again from them. Hashirama believes it's a good idea, and Tobirama agrees. But the question is, who will be the Jinchurikis of the Yin and Yang halves of the Ninetales? Minato offers himself to be one, and his son Naruto to be the other. Tobirama is skeptical about sealing half of one of the Leaf's greatest weapons into a newborn baby, but Minato states that Naruto is an Uzumaki like Kushina was, and that he will be able to make the most of its power. Remembering his wife, and remembering how she passed the Nine Tails to Kushina, Hashirama is moved with emotion and personally decides to honor Minato's request. So they split the Nine Tails in two and give half to Minato and the other half to Naruto. The three Hokage then focus their efforts on rebuilding the village, all while ensuring that the Anbu continue to look for pain. From here, peace resumes, and time skips forward about 10 years. Knowledge of who possesses the Ninetales is considered sensitive information, and they don't tell anyone who it is. The only people allowed to know are the first, second, and third Hokages, Minato, Naruto, and select members of the Anbu tasked with protecting them. Naruto is allowed to train, and due to having his father with him, he ends up a little stronger. He has access to quite a few Jutsu by the time he graduates the Academy. He has access to the Shadow Clone Jutsu and the Rasengan. This means he has incredible control over his chakra. 
Sasuke, on the other hand, never has to witness his clan being destroyed and eventually does get trained by Itachi, meaning he'll start off stronger too. Sakura has no difference. Yes, I know, since Naruto and Sasuke are stronger, they no longer need to cover for their weaknesses, meaning they likely won't end up on the same team together, but I'm gonna make it happen for two reasons. Number one is that it seems a shame to break up such an iconic team, and number two is I'm too lazy to think up any other teams they could go on. The Land of Waves arc happens, but the difference here is that Sasuke and Naruto are stronger now, and Kakashi does not have access to the Sharingan. This could either be very good or very bad. It could be good because Naruto and Sasuke are strong enough to actually help Kakashi fight Zabuza and Haku, or very bad because Kakashi won't be able to use his Sharingan to fight. For the sake of story, we'll say it's good, because you know who does have a Sharingan? Sasuke. In fact, he has two. So altogether, they might just pull it off. So if we say it's good, it'll mostly stay the same. Then is the Chunin exams arc, and that also mostly stays the same. The exception is that Orochimaru would not attack, as he would have been killed earlier on in the series due to Tobirama, who, despite having a kindred spirit in Orochimaru, thinks that the Twisted Sanin has gone too far and would utterly destroy him. During the exams, it comes down to Naruto and Sasuke. Hashirama would comment to Madara as they fought that they remind Hashirama of himself and Madara when they were children. Madara says that if that is so, we'll know who will win. And just as Madara predicted, Naruto comes out on top due to his access to the Rasengan, a technique that Sasuke could not mimic. Naruto would win the preliminaries, and he and his entire team would ascend to the rank of Chunin. Due to the lack of Orochimaru's involvement, Gara wouldn't turn into Shukaku, and he further wouldn't make friends with Naruto. This means he remains that homicidal psychopath for the rest of his short-lived life. This also means it's not such big news when Gara is killed two years later when his tailed beast is stripped from him. Due to Sasuke never leaving, since he has his family in this one, no hate and is all around better as a character, and due to Orochimaru being dead, there is no Tenchi Bridge Recon mission. However, it is noticed when the tailed beasts start disappearing all across the world. This causes Tobirama to believe that the Akatsuki are moving again. The Anbu mobilize to hunt them down. During a mission, however, Naruto, Sasuke, Kakashi, and Sakura are ambushed by Pain and his six paths. During the course of the battle, Kakashi is incapacitated, Sasuke is mortally wounded, and Naruto has his tailed beast stripped from him. Sakura realizes that she doesn't have enough chakra to heal everyone, and Naruto states that she should focus on Sasuke. Sakura doesn't know if she has the chakra reserves to heal him completely, but Naruto donates to her what he has left and she manages to heal Sasuke. Later, they'd be returned to the Hidden Leaf. Naruto would be buried, and Sasuke and Kakashi would be admitted to the hospital, with the latter getting out early due to minor injuries. All the while, Tobirama, Hashirama, and Madara would convene to talk about the threat. Tobirama states that it is his belief that they're gathering the tailed beasts together to revive the Tentails to launch the infinite Tsukiyomi. Madara seconds that. Hashirama then declares the Akatsuki to be wanted criminals to the Leaf. They would begin to mobilize all forces to bring them down. It isn't long until a shinobi rushes into the Hokage's office with urgent news. Sasuke Uchiha has awakened, and he's gained access to his own set of Rinnegan. Now, I'll explain. Sasuke achieves the Rinnegan due to Naruto donating the remains of his chakra to helping Sakura revive Sasuke. This means that both Indra Chakra and Asura Chakra have mixed. Therefore, Sasuke has achieved Six Paths Chakra, and thus the Rinnegan like Madara. Madara would visit him in the hospital. Sakura is with Sasuke, both of whom are mourning Naruto's death. Madara asks for time alone with Sasuke, and Sakura allows it. Madara would inform Sasuke of his new abilities and what they mean. He tells Sasuke that he is possibly the only hope they have of stopping the Akatsuki and avenging Naruto's death. And further, perhaps the only hope they have of saving the world. Madara would personally petition Sasuke to be under his charge as his student, being the only other person in the village to have experience with the Rinnegan. Together they train. Meanwhile, Tobirama reaches out to the village hidden in the clouds about a possible threat to their Jinchuriki. And through this, it cascades into a Five Kage summit where Hashirama and Tobirama are summoned to meet. They go, and most events transpire the same, except there's no real assault on the Kage. In the end, the Kage decide to form a united front against the Akatsuki, and elect Tobirama as their leader. They begin to search for the Akatsuki. Tobirama tells them what is at stake and what to look for. The allied shinobi forces begin to spread out, looking for the Tentails Husk. Meanwhile, the Six Paths of Pain track down Killer B on the island and manage to take his tailed beast from him. At this time, the Anbu return with reports of a strange tree of unknown species in the middle of nowhere. Madara exclaims that that's what they're looking for. They begin to mobilize their forces. They would head for it, only to be stopped a few times by Zetsu and various Akatsuki members. 
Itachi would be with Sasuke helping him train. Now, in this universe, Itachi is still alive. In the series, it's never stated what killed him. He got sick, that is true, but what killed him is unknown. I once heard an interesting theory that his disease was actually caused by his usage of the Mangekyo Sharingan, which at this point he might not have due to Shisui never dying due to Danzo, who Madara wouldn't suffer. However, if this is wrong and Itachi's sickness was brought on by something else, then I could still see him surviving if he had proper medical treatment. Perhaps help from Tsunade might be able to save him. I'm not sure, but it seems plausible that Itachi could survive to this point at least. They would eventually reach the final battle, but find that it's too late, as the Ten Tails is already being revived. Nagato at this point would absorb the Ten Tails according to Black Zetsu's wishes. However, Zetsu would immediately fill Nagato with Kaguya's will and turn him into her, basically, reviving her. The three Hokage, Sasuke, and Tailed Beast Cloak Minato would all rush her and an army of Zetsu as she prepares to launch her infinite Tsukiyomi. As she does so, Sasuke would cover them all with his Susano that he's developed and trained during his time with Madara. Given that he has a Rinnegan, all those in his Susana would be protected from the Genjutsu. They would engage in battle against Kaguya, but it seems like it is for nothing, as they can barely touch her, let alone hurt her, let alone kill her. During the course of the battle, when it's at its lowest, the Sage of Six Paths would offer his chakra to his sons, but instead of choosing Sasuke and Naruto, he chooses Madara and Hashirama. Taking the power from the Sage of Six Paths, Madara would redevelop his Rinnegan, but only in a single eye this time, and Hashirama could manifest Six Paths Sage Mode. He would also grant the two of them the seal of the Six Paths Chibaku Tensei. They would all engage in battle against Kaguya, and now things are seeming a little more even. They would travel through various dimensions until they manage to get their mitts on Kaguya and brand her with the seals. This would cause her to lose control of the Ten Tails power. She would spit Nagato out and be formed into a moon hovering alone in one of her empty dimensions. They would find Nagato, who was dying due to the loss of the Ten Tails' power. He would say that all he wanted was peace. He would have done anything for it. He tells his story, about what he had lost in the Second Shinobi World War. Madara would inform him that he felt the same in his younger years. In his sorrow, to make recompense, Nagato would use Six Paths Samsara of Heavenly Life technique to revive anyone who died due to his actions as an Akatsuki member, and revives those who are lost, including Naruto, and all those who had their tailed beasts stripped from them. The war would come to an end, and Madara would reclaim his lost Rinnegan with one to spare. He holds on to it and has it stored away, with only those who have Hokage status being allowed to know of its existence. It is meant to only be used if there's an emergency. Due to this, Hashirama, Tobirama, and Madara would train up the next generation. They would come to realize that peace was earned by war, through mutual respect, mutual strength, and mutual love. The bonds forged they feel are important to be ingrained for the next generation. If hatred can be passed down from generation to generation, maybe respect can be as well. So they begin to teach the next generation of shinobi how to maintain that peace, and eventually, when they feel that they have successfully left a proper legacy and achieved their dream, they pass their title down to the fourth Okage. And that's about it. What did you think? I really enjoyed making this one. It's no secret that my favorite Naruto character is Madara Uchiha. Well, maybe it was a secret, but it's not anymore. I really enjoyed this one because Madara was a very complicated character with a desire for peace. He was a real might-makes-right kind of guy, but in the end, he fell down the wrong path. It was nice to explore a world where he and Hashirama remained buds to the end and brought peace to the shinobi world as was in their dreams. But what do you think? What would have happened had Madara never left the village? I'm interested to hear your thoughts on this. Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to like this video if you enjoyed it and click for a subscription to support the channel. Ring the bell to be notified when we release new content. Peace out, comrades.